Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. We're on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. I'm Peter Martin. Alan Ruff and Tam Cowan are with me on this Tuesday. Great to have your company. Don't forget, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just hit the button and you'll be with us Monday to Friday. We're live at four o'clock and you can watch it at your leisure if you can't join us on the live feed. Simple as that. Lots to talk about today. Scotland dominates our thoughts because there are three huge World Cup qualifiers coming up. And in the sunshine outside Hamden Park, Gabriel Antoniazzi is there. Um, Gabs, it's it's a big decision for Steve Clark because these three games are absolutely crucial for us. Yeah, it feels like the European Championships are already behind us. The focus is on Qatar 2022. It's only 16 months away. Who could believe it? But these three fixtures are crucial. First, they go to Copenhagen against Denmark, who, of course, made the semi-finals of the Euros just a couple of months ago. Then they come at home to Moldova, who they would expect to beat with ease. And then it's away to Austria. That's the crucial one. If they are realistically going to progress from this group, they're going to have to win one of those two massive away fixtures. And what about the squad? Well, he's named a 26-man squad, which is, of course, what was allowed at the European Championships. Four changes. We're going to start with the players that have come in. It's Xander Clark and Liam Kelly in goal. Both of them uncapped. Kelly has been in the squad before but never played. Xander Clark, a cup double winner with St. Johnston last campaign. And then looking forwards, you've got Kenny McLean. Of course, he missed out of the Euros because of an injury. The Norwich City man returns to the squad. And Lewis Ferguson, his first ever call-up after impressive displays for Aberdeen over the last couple of seasons. He's played plenty of times for the under-21s. The four players that miss out, well, it's Scott McTominay. The Manchester United man has an injury that's got to be addressed with his club. He didn't play at the weekend. He won't play for Scotland. John Fleck, who didn't play a minute at the Euros, will not play a minute in these qualifiers either. He's not in the squad. And the two goalkeepers. John McLaughlin also has an injury for Rangers. But David Marshall, the shootout hero here, saving penalties against Israel in October. And then the famous one from Alexander Mitrovic to send Scotland to the Euros against Serbia in November. He is now third choice goalkeeper at Derby County's club. And that's why Steve Clark hasn't included him. Yeah, and with Steve Clark in mind, uh, he's a happy man. He's got a contract extension. Yeah, Clark's previous deal ran until the Qatar 2022 World Cup, but he signed a new contract, which will see him stay until the end of Euro 2024 qualifying. So that's two tournaments time. That'll be around 2023, 2024. That will be held in Germany. But Clark said it was straightforward. Uh, it's nice to know that his bosses think he's doing well. And he's looking forward to building something. You know, he was highlighting the fact that he's bringing in these younger players as well. You've got Patterson, uh, David Turnbull, of course, Ferguson, and Billy Gilmore. Will he be at the centre of Clark's plans going forward. We'll have to wait and see. It's not just Clark that's been given a new contract. He's brought in a few new backroom staff members as well. Uh, that's because there's been some exits. So John Carver will be staying as one of his assistants, but Stephen Reid is leaving. He's going to focus on Nottingham Forest. That's his club. As is Stevie Woods, the longtime goalkeeping coach. He's just going to be staying with Celtic and spending more time with his family. So going to bring in Chris Woods as a goalkeeping coach. And Austin McPhee, one-time Hearts interim boss, most recently been at Aston Villa as a set-piece manager. He's been with Northern Ireland as well, helped them get to Euro 2016. But Steve Clark highlighted his experience in international football and also uh, his set-piece quality. And that's something that the team can improve on. Yeah, um, Gabs, here in the studio, it's, it's not quite the same temperature as it is for you out there at Hamden, but both these guys are in shorts. I just wonder how you're going to handle the live feed from Qatar if Scotland get there to the World Cup. What will you be wearing? Will you go for the shorts um, and just uh, get rid of the short trousers that you usually wear? Yeah, well, it's short trousers and no socks, but when it's shorts, it's long socks. So I'm going to be going for that. I'll be taking inspiration from Ruffy with his pink shorts, pink top, and uh, he'll be sitting at home because it's going to be winter. Roughly, it'll be freezing and I'll be in my shorts when Scotland do qualify. They're going to have to start by beating either Denmark or Austria or even both. Yeah. Just before you go, Gabs, how many points do you think we need from the next three? Well, that was a question that was posed to Steve Clark. Of course, as ever, he was tight-lipped, didn't want to give anything. But realistically, we're, we're not going to win the group unless we win both of these games because we have already dropped points to Israel and Austria. So if you want to come as the second qualifier, which would then get you into the playoff as one of the runners-up, realistically, they're going to have to win at home heavily against Moldova and probably win away to v yeah, in Vienna as well, considering the fact that Copenhagen is a tough task. 
perhaps two draws away in Vienna and Copenhagen would be enough. You never know, but it's going to have to be positive ones for Steve Clark and possibly the biggest result he's had in qualifying yet could be a win in Vienna. We'll all have our fingers crossed. That game comes in about 12 days' time. We're looking forward to it now. Yeah, absolutely. Well done, Gabs, out there for us uh, just covering that. Uh, Scotland squad announcement, talking to Steve Clark. We'll hear from Steve Clark in the next couple of minutes. What do you make of the squad, Tom? Well, first up, I have to say, what a two-faced get you are. I mean, I, I left the show last week, Ruffy. Peter texts me, says, Tom, any chance next week we're trying to get more female viewers involved in the show? Could you wear your shorts next week? You know, and I, and I, and I did that. I did that, and it'll lure all the ladies in, of course, my pins. But no, I'm, 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 I've got loads of thoughts on that squad. That's a great thing. Anytime a Scotland squad gets announced, you're... You're feverishly looking at it and you're, you're trying to pick out the detail. First up, even on behalf of Mold Mucker Cosgrove, I'm delighted for Xander Clark getting in there. For all their um, efforts uh, over the past year, St Johnston should have been represented in that squad. It's good to see as well that Stevie Clark is still the hard taskmaster. I mean, dearie me, he could get a gig now as the next, uh, you know, uh, pantomime villain this Christmas to drop David Marshall. I mean, it doesn't seem that long ago still that he made that save in Serbia to, to take us to the Euros, you know. But um, I think we we always knew that uh, Stevie uh, drove a hard bargain when he, when he dropped, of course, as well in the summer, Andy Considine. And, you know, I, I remember almost campaigning at the time. I thought, wait a minute, the whole yes sir, I can boogie thing, which stemmed for Andy Considine's stag video. Think how much money and merchandise Andy Considine made for the SFA and the run-up to the Euros and then they get the heave. Oh, you know. Well, so, hey, good good on Stevie Clark for being brutal. That's what you want in a manager. Well, I'm, I must admit, Ruffy, I mean, f- fair play to him. As Tam says here, he's... He's not shirking the responsibility when he when he's trying to get us to these mm-hmm. major tournaments. No, I think David Marshall will be absolutely gutted, uh, but he'll know himself. You know, if you're not playing regular football, you're not playing international football. And I thought he would have got a move by now with that in the back of his mind. There were rumours he was going to move to somebody, but it's seemingly his third choice now at Derby. So the sooner he gets a move, the better. But we all know Craig Gordon is playing particularly well. Xander Clark, I've said, is deserves to be in there a third goalkeeper at least with the season that the, the team have had and he's had so that'll be a massive boost for everybody up at St Johnson but oh, uh, David Marshall definitely needs to get a move aye. and you know what Peter putting on my old Claret and Amber specs I'm obviously delighted that Liam Kelly's in there mm. Uh, but I would look beyond that, I'll remove the aforementioned spectacles and say that I'm uh, delighted to see Craig Gordon in there again as well. Um, he, for me, is still number one. I, I, I still think he's a top, top goal and I, I think it's almost criminal to think that he had to spend a year in the Championship. A goalie of his stature should not have been playing lower league football. That's just bonkers. Yep. You can give us your view on the Scotland squad, what you think about it. Um, hi to quite a number of people who've been obviously uh, talking to us on the live feed as well. Uh, David Bradley says, why Patterson? Um, Patterson's the number one right back in Scotland, says Ian Doherty. He hasn't kicked a ball yet, uh, to be honest with you. Ian, we'd love to see him actually uh, playing football uh, on a regular basis. Frank Green, a little bit pessimistic. Scotland won't qualify. Um, can't see his winning through, says Patrick as well. Um, so there's a lot of people maybe just wondering, um, don't see us actually getting anything in the in the games away from home, uh, I'm looking at the three games, and I, I think we need seven out of uh, seven out of nine to get us right back in there, Robbie. But oh, I can't. No, I can't. <laughs> I'm giving you what I think we need. Seven. I'm not. I'm not telling you what I think will happen. I'm telling you what I think we need, which is seven. Yeah, out of nine. we need. We need that. I mean, I would settle for five, but five's still going to put you a long way behind the the leaders. So we're all ready going for that runners up thing, or yeah. best third team, or whatever. Positive results. We've got to win our home game. Yeah. We're up start. against it trying to catch Denmark already. Yeah, of course, yeah. I mean, we saw what they were like in the Euros. They're absolutely magnificent. Aye, you know, yeah. fantastic. Way ahead of us. So for the thought of actually thinking we're going to go there and win, I can't see it. I can see us maybe getting a draw if we put in the kind of performance we put in against England. You know, just dogged, you know, defend everybody, battling for each other. Strangest things have happened when you go away from home. But you're right, no, two wins, uh, I, I find it hard to believe we're going to get two wins out of the three Well, I, I, I do think we'll get through, Peter, simply because, as you know, it was 16 out of 24 teams that qualified at the Euros. Yep. We now, as well as the Europa League, we have the Europa Conference League. And, uh, you know, I can fully see FIFA deciding now that everybody 
that takes part in the World Cup qualifiers just gets through to the finals. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> we're getting to that stage now yeah. where nobody gets knocked out in football. Well, absolutely. Andrew McDonald says, I'm new, um, Peter. Andrew, we're delighted you could join us. We're all um, talking about uh, Scotland. Uh, of course, just getting to the Euros was brilliant because we all got a chance to... We all live off the fact that if Scotland make a major tournament, we get a chance to, to, to work on it as well. Um, Steve Clark's Getting us to the Euros has got him a new contract. He's he's a happy man about it. Yeah, it's, it's nice. Obviously, it's nice when your when your bosses think you've done a decent job and they give you a little extension. So it was nice to get that one put away. I think the the little taste that we all got of the European Championships in the summer has has made everybody a little bit excited for more. So hopefully, we can deliver. Yeah, fair play to him. I think it's the right move to give him that extension, you. Yeah, and you're right, he's a happy man about it. Nearly <laughs> nearly broke into a grimace there. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't don't ever change Stevie if you're watching this. I, I love a manager like that. Didn't he do Jim McLean any harm? But yeah, get him in there. Um, you know, we were we were beaten uh when you look back now, when you've had plenty of time to reflect on the Euros. Um, you know, the, the, the Czech Republic uh, was no disgrace, and I still say that Patrick Sheik goal, which folk were trying to describe at the time as a freak and all the rest of it, nonsense. There were 101 players at that tournament who could have tried that and they, they wouldn't have found the back of the net, you know. Um, and I'd have every sympathy for David Marshall in that, incidentally, as I have about him not being in the squad. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, you know, Croatia. Uh, way Modric, absolutely a joy to watch, you know, and you think there was no disgrace getting getting beaten there. So I think Ruffy's right, the, the performance that they put in against England, maybe we need to focus on that and think, you know, that's what we really need to build on. Yeah, um, here's Steve Clark's take on the aforementioned David Marshall. Well, obviously David's, David Marshall, who was my number one, uh, has had a tough tough time at Derby. He's found himself as, as the number three goalkeeper. Uh, don't want to comment too much on the the politics or whatever of that decision. Uh, I've spoken to David. He's disappointed not to be involved, but he fully understands why he's not involved in this camp. It's if he gets himself a move before the end of the transfer window, or if he gets back involved with, with Derby County, David would be straight back into my thoughts. No doubt about that. Yeah, I'd like to see him get a move to get back playing, David Marshall. I think it's a lesson to everybody out there who wants to play for Scotland if you're not playing first-team football. Well, it's not yeah. a lesson because Nathan Patterson hasn't kicked a ball for Rangers. Yeah, well, there are a lot of players out there who haven't, you know, played, you know, and some of them get a, ch a chance. But Nathan Patterson's a, an exception. We saw him for 10 minutes in one of the games and he, he didn't look at a place. But it remains to be seen whether he gets playing. Yeah. Either keep him interested, keep the young boys in there, keep them in the squad. Whether he plays is another thing, you know. But I think there'll come a time if uh, Tavernier continues to play, 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 play and the boy only gets two or three games... He's going to come into the same, same situation, I yeah. think. I know Stephen Reid and Stephen Woods, as Gab's mentioned there, um, obviously going out for um, personal reasons. Obviously, I think they've got the jobs, mm -hmm. trying to juggle the two of them is hectic enough. Um, were you surprised Chris Woods? I hadn't heard Chris Woods' name for Neither a long, long time. <laughs> Neither have I, but he must have been goalkeeping coaching down in England with somebody. Yeah. You know, it must have been... I think he was over in America high, as well, Ruffy. Yeah, he must have had high recommendations for somebody, and obviously Stevie's came across him at some stage in his career and, and said, he's the guy I want. Yeah. I think as well with Chris Woods, I mean, um, certainly great pedigree, and you think he had that great shutout record, of course, didn't he? Yeah. Was it something like... Or the longest Was it shut out. 13 games or something like that? He went without losing a goal. And he's also involved in that great trivia question that you may remember about um, during Chris Woods' time in Scotland uh, with Rangers, who scored, which individual player scored the most goals against them? Right, go on. The answer is Terry Butcher. Oh geez. oh geez, I think yeah. it might have been four or five, definitely four or five, but no individual other player put a totally four or five goals past Chris Woods. Yeah, and to be it's fair, a great to, question. It is actually, to be fair to Terry, his own goals were special. Oh, they were great. Mind the man at uh, was it Tanadice, the backward header. Yeah, it was. It was a kick out, and then Butcher almost put it at the same height, but he'd looked right over uh, Chris Woods. It was a belter, right? I also hold that same record: twenty-five games without a shot out. 
<laughs> Absolutely. At a national level. Some of, <laughs> some, I know, exactly. Some of them in international, some of them in Edinburgh derbies. Um, of course, it's not all sweetness and light with regards to players uh, all joining up um, with the international squads. I noticed that there's a number of clubs down south refusing to release some of their players. Uh, Manchester City and Liverpool uh, are not going to release six players for the World Cup qualifiers. Um, this is because obviously they're in red countries and this whole 10 days of quarantine uh, rules them out and basically they're paying their wages. It's, it's one of those arguments that'll, you know, gather a bit of pace, Salah, Becker, Fabinho, Firmino, um, Ederson and Gabriel Jesus um, are ruled out from Man City as well. You can understand why they're paying their wages um, nonetheless. But as far as Scotland are concerned, three huge games coming up. We'll be covering them in detail. Um, and you can give us your views on how you think it's all going um, and players that you think should be there as ever with Scotland squad. Some drop out. Uh, pick up injuries and then somebody is drafted in so it could change that squad as we get ever closer to these matches from international football um, we're going to switch our attention to um, Scottish football domestically and it's the it's the game that just keeps on giving up here Tam it never ceases to amaze me uh, the madness that goes on on a daily basis and this uh, week uh, Rangers chairman Douglas Park has blocked the arbitration case um, over Cinch um, of course, the SPFL wanted to go to arbitration and allow the SFA to adjudicate over this one, but Douglas Parks won an interim interdict blocking the SFA from proceeding with the case. Um, now, this all stems from them refusing the branding. There's arguments on the technicalities of who said what, when the email was initiated to highlight the cinch deal, when um, somebody then responded to say it would have been a conflict of interest. Here's Ranger's statement on this court ruling. Um, this is what they had to say. Uh, the court ruling, once again, underlines ongoing concerns regarding the corporate governance and leadership of the SPFL. These concerns are shared by many of the SPFL's member clubs. We have um, complied with the SPFL's own rules, but the court hearing was one that could easily have been avoided if those responsible had adopted a more uh, consensual and less confrontational approach. Uh, the executive of the SPFL required to carry out effective uh, due diligence before entering into its contract with a new league sponsor. Indeed, uh, an inadequate and antagonistic approach uh, appears to have been adopted. One that is hard to imagine is in the best interest of the SBFL's member clubs. Well, you can debate um, till you're blue in the face um, the rights and wrongs of this case. The ultimate situation we find ourselves in here, Ruffy, is quite simply that we are on the verge of losing this deal if, if no agreement is made and, and clubs will suffer financially and we will be yet again a top flight without a sponsor. Yeah, and, and unfortunately this is going to go on and on again. You know, this is just a, a case that's held up. I'm sure the SPFL will come back with something and then it'll go on and on and on. And, and, and as you say, I don't think the sponsor will pay out until it's uh, settled in one way or another. So all the other clubs will, you know, suffer if they need the money. So we just have to wait and see. Who's, I, I don't think either of the two will back down. So I think this is a, just an ongoing case. It's going to rumble on for a while. Yeah, it's a, it's a sad situation we find ourselves in with it, Tam. There is, um, and we have um, commented on previous shows, the motivation um, from one party towards the SPFL, there's, you know, an underlying... Um, how can I put it? It's not. It's not so much an underlying um, gripe. It's a. It's an underlying um, real fallout between the two of them. There is a. There is in my mind a real desire to to get rid of Neil Doncaster. Yeah, yeah. and you know what? In some respects, Peter, uh, the biggest thing for me is just thinking. Here we are. We're at the start of a new season. We've got fans back in, and we're already talking about an uh, interim interdict. It's not the language that fans, that football fans like to talk about, you know. I'm just really, really hoping it can it can be resolved, you know. Uh, I mean, I don't know, Stuart Robertson, Dominic Mackay, 
a way out and have a pint with each other and see if you can bang your heads together and get it resolved. We we know, and I've heard a lot of folk for Rangers side pointing this out, that, 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 that we're not talking millions of pounds that every club mm. is going to pick up, but particularly after a pandemic, every every penny is a prisoner, you know. So let's just try and, and get it resolved and move on because this sort of stuff and anything that involves court cases, and there's been plenty of that in recent years in Scottish football, I, I don't know if I speak for all the football fans out there, but I just find them a huge turn-off. It's no what you want to be talking about. Well, you might find them a huge turn-off, Tam, but I'll tell you, it's not over. This is just no, going, no. this is just going to drag on, Ruffy, and, and, and if it's not the cinch deal, it'll be something else. This is going to drag on until until eventually, um, you know, there's, there's a slip-up somewhere that, you know, Heads will roll. That's that's the end game here. It doesn't take you know a genius to work out what what the motivation is here. You know, this whole issue of whether the deal is you know contradictory or uh, again uh, goes against um, Douglas Parks Motor Company and the cinch deal. Whether there was communication rightly or wrongly, um, it it's just. It's just another part of this constant fighting that is involved in Scottish football. I'm not saying whether, and just to be clear, because there are a shower of morons who don't listen in context, um, I'm not saying that Rangers are right, SPFL is wrong, or the SPFL is right, Rangers are wrong. That's for a legal team to, to debate. Absolutely. The, the whole thing here is we are going down a road where nobody wants to agree there are certain factions who have a real desire to get rid of the, the chief executive and there is not harmony within the camp. There are old scores that are apparently going to be settled which has come from, you know, Rangers vice president already has stated there are scores to be settled with certain people. Yeah. I don't know who they are, I don't know what they've got the gripe against them and whether it goes all the way back to 2012 but unfortunately for everybody it's a sad situation. I have advocated exactly what Tam said which is there is a need a, de a, a genuine need for someone on a higher plane, whether it's a new commissioner, as I've mentioned before, Ruffy, but someone to get Rangers back on side, get everybody back around the table yep. and start afresh with something that we uh, you know, can promote and be proud of and get on together and go and get better deals. Whether, as Stuart Robertson pointed out, we have undersold the SPFL deal to Sky and other broadcasters. That may well be the case, but we we were in a difficult situation at the time. Yeah. But I'd like to someone to get Rangers back on side so that we can all together try and get something better for all the clubs. But I don't think that's going to happen with the present SPFL board. I think it's went too far. No, you're it's right. went too far. You know, the only way you're going to get that commissioner role if you remove the SPFL board that's there the now. And I don't think we're very far away with Rangers throwing that statement out saying we know there are other members who are not happy with this board. I don't think we're very far away for somebody calling for a vote of confidence uh, in this SPL board to see what all the other clubs are thinking the same way Rangers are thinking. You know, I think Rangers, that way Rangers is next step to test the water to see how many other people want this board changed. And I think that's what this whole thing is leading to. Yeah. And in the meantime, with the, with the flags and that, let's let's keep it light. You know what I mean? The bottom line, as I was reading this morning, it's an impossibility. I know, I know. <laughs> but uh, you know, interim interdicts. That's not what fuck my program should be about. But you know, I was reading there this morning that um, when Rangers are sent, basically the cinch mm -hmm. uh, title flag uh, to unfurl Ibrox, which of course they will refuse to do, yeah. as things stand in September against Mullow, Rangers could just turn around the SPFL when they put up their own flag and say. Oh, sorry, you, you must have sent it to Partick Thistle by mistake. Because <laughs> right? at least let's, they... <laughs> let's hope it doesn't go to Partick. Because, <laughs> <laughs> of course, we do have very recent previous uh, on that note. Hmm. But I would even make it lighter. When I was reading about us this morning, uh, Keith Jackson in the back page of the record, he's saying that Rangers might go with a homemade flag, right? Yeah. No, let's get the kids involved. You, you remember when we were young, you watched Vision On or Take Heart and you could send in your pictures or even yes. uh, a Glenn Michaels cavalcade. Let's get the young Rangers fans to send in their suggestions for a title flag, right? Yes. And the one that wins, the competition winner, the kids' mum or dad get a car from either Douglas Park or Cinch, <laughs> right? And then whichever car that the mum or dad decide is the better one, they get the deal. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> right. Great, I think they would go with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, now this stems, this stems from Tom who came into the studio earlier and he goes, did you, did you ever send a, a, a painting into the co-op and you get a bar of chocolate oh, for it? And I said, and I looked at him and I said, no, that must have been just the Motherwell area that did that, but you did. It was great. He did it every year off of uh, MD tuned in for Motherwell. We'll remember the big, the real big department store uh, when it was a proper big co op with uh, it was almost like Grace Brothers and RUB and served, right? The gents area, the women's, the toys and everything. But every year at a primary school, you would do a picture. And if your picture gets shown up and display in the store, you get, oh, particularly when you were that size, a bar of dairy milk. It was like a front door, and it was absolute. I mean, that was something you don't let go at Christmas, you know, it was great. Bang, that's a good shout. Get yeah. the kids involved. Or, dare I say it, dare I say it, if they're looking for somebody to design a flag for Rangers, is it time to get even with the face painter? Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> and say, right, we'll commission you. We'll commission you. Let bygones be bygones. We'll commission you today uh, the new flag. <laughs> but you know what? Just get it sorted and lighten up. Yeah. I ain't, I ain't every Rangers fans. It, fans of every club, they're fed up listening to all this stuff. <laughs> well, keep fat boot the courts and get it back in the park. Listen, see when, see when in the morning when we sit down and we think about the things that you want to talk about. I, I, I love talking about great we're, there's some things that we've got on the show today which are great about statues and honouring great players and, and managers but when you're putting something together Ruffy unfortunately some of the things that drive the show because it's a Monday to Friday the, the things that drive the show sometimes on a newsy situation in Scottish football it, it, it's either bickering backstabbing um, misbehaviour I mean some of the conduct it is in the gutter. And Grant Lumsden has just said, Rangers are never happy. Stop giving them air time and talk football. Um, well, you know, whether it's Rangers or whether it's somebody else, we are totally and utterly dragged into the gutter with the, the type of things that go on in Scottish football. Yeah, and as, as Tam says, we want to be sitting here talking about football. We want to huh? talk about yeah. the Scotland squad. We want to talk about the games, the European games that are coming up. But unfortunately, there's morons out there who don't behave themselves properly huh? and, and you have to talk about it. And the point I'm making here on this, and this is a sad situation because... Um, Tam, I, I mean, I, I, I don't know about you. I mean, you went to DL school. Uh, Braithurst, time. You went to Braithurst, right? Which is, well, a lot of my mates went to Braithurst. I mean, if I missed the special bus in the morning, right? That's what you called it. The bus. <laughs> the, right. Not the, not the normal bus that took you to Motherwell. Everybody got on a school special. School right? special, yeah. So if I ran down there and I missed it, the car coming behind it usually, I knew as a safety at nine o'clock, was Gary McAllister. All right. Aye. From my village, right? Aye. Now, Gary would go, Pedro, you going up to school? And I'd be like, brilliant. Because he's going to train with Motherwell. I'm going up to a ladies high school. We've known each other for years. I, I, I genuinely don't think at either of our schools we were taught to hate some people. No. I don't think no. it was on the, in, the, in the curriculum anywhere. No, of course you not. Know, uh, let's hate this person who lives a, a couple of doors down for you. So, so people can... People can be um, I mean, tolerant. You had your fights and you threw stones at oh, each other at dinner time, but you didn't hate each other. <laughs> oh, exactly. <laughs> but, but there was. But you're a product of your parents. Ah, yeah, and absolutely. You go to your school. So you brought up. How does how does how does um, Kyogo Furuhashi feel? He's coming into the country. He's lucky if he's here a month, Ruffy, and he has to he has to basically be made aware of this um, racism. You know, a number of Rangers fans who've been caught on a social media feed, right? Now, Rangers have dealt with it quickly, out right away and banned them. Um, but I think Ange Postacoglu has come out uh, in the last 24 hours and said, it's not about education, it's about being a decent person. I think it's a bit of both. I think it's both. It's about education and it's about re-education and it's right. also about parenting. You yep. know, because I don't remember any of my family or anybody... Uh, you know, as I'm growing up thinking, oh, Tom went to Braithurst, so you should hate him. That's a nonsense. No, I think the parenting is the big thing. It's the, it's the young kids who are growing up. I don't know, there, there are certain elements out there who are past it. There are certain elements out there you will never change. Never, ever, in a million years. They are what they are. Now, I don't know what age that is, you know, but they're so steeped in whatever it is. And I'm talking about all clubs. I'm not just talking about one club. If they're of that mentality... I think there is no way back. So you've Aye. just got to bin them. Get them out and yep. punish them and do whatever you've got to do with them. And Rangers because did it, do that. And yeah, Rangers have done that. It. brilliant because it, it's the young kids that are coming up. I don't know if you've noticed at Motherwell, Tom. I've noticed at Partick Thistle. There are more and more young kids 
coming to the game now. Yeah. There are yeah. more and more kids. There's a more variety of kids, parents, yep. families coming to the games. And these are the ones that we should be looking at and going, Aye. right, this has to stop because they're, they're the future of the game. But see, at the other end of the spectrum, Peter, when you're talking about age, there are a lot of young guys at football, it was young guys that were the perpetrators, eh, the, the pitchers that sadly we've all viewed. The guys that I was, I would like to actually know the answers, but the guys that I was feeling a bit sorry for, I, 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 I travelled in two supporters buses going up, two different supporters buses, and there was always in every supporters bus, it wasn't as if it was just a young team, there was always a wee old guys, I can still picture some of them, sat down the front, the bonnet zone, never missed a game. I'm wondering how many of them have been caught up in this because they're effectively getting told that, you're, that, that, that you know that supporters uh, bus is, is effectively outlawed, you're not getting any tickets. And they must be, that'll be a sore one for the lot of folk on that innocent parties, you know. Yeah. But, but I, do admire, association. Yeah, I do admire the way that, that, that Rangers came out very, very swiftly and, and took the appropriate action. Uh, and on that point, this is what that uh, group of uh, Rangers supporters and the, the, the supporters bus had to say on this. Um, even though I don't travel to Dingwall as the senior committee member, uh, I thought I had to make a statement about the unsavoury video that was found uh, filmed on our supporters' bus. Um, what was on that video is totally unacceptable and everyone that was involved has been handed lifetime bans and will not be allowed to travel on the bus. Our club was founded in 1966 and I personally have been involved with it for over 40 years and have always prided ourselves being a family club. I can assure you that the views and actions of the lads in the video are not those of myself or the members of WRSC. Uh, we have accepted the decision of Rangers and will work with them going forward uh, and reiterate to everyone that there is no place for this behaviour, not just in football, but in society as a whole, which is, uh, I think, a nice uh, point to put across here for the decent people who suffer at the hands Absolutely. of these guys. Um, Glib says, decent parents tell you to treat people respectfully, like mine, um, take people as I find them, end of. And I think a lot of people are that. Don't forget also, I also apologise on, on countless occasions, we deal with things that come up on a daily basis. So if you are into what about her, what about them, what about this, what about that from times gone by, it's a daily show and we deal with things that come up on a daily basis and reference things that have happened that are relevant to it. Um, so we do that. It's not just about what's happening. Uh, no club is singled out. If there's something that is happening, we'll talk about it. We'll not mince our words on it. We'll give you our opinion on it. I do apologise from time to time and I would like to apologise sometimes to the feed that we have that comes up. If you're watching the show on YouTube on your telly, you'll not see the feed. You won't see some of the comments and some of the, um, again, gutter element who make comments that are not policed at this stage, but they will be in the in the future. And I think for all the decent people that comment on football on our show, we embrace that. We love the fact that you do it. And we love the fact you love your football club, but there are some who are unsavory and, you know, it just beggars belief. But that's a, that statement from the Westwood RSC regarding uh, the conduct of those individuals who are banned, and I'm sure there are other punishments coming their way. Um, talking of bans, Ruffy, with football, off the park, Celtic fined €7,000 by UEFA, letting off flares and one, you know, I, I can't believe it, one moron who runs onto the pitch um, which just beggars belief at Celtic Park last week. And everybody's just looking at him and thinking, why? I mean, what what purpose to run onto the pitch, stop the game? And then again, another group at St Johnston, you know, a small section of the East Stand now will be closed for, the, for that Europa Conference second leg, a huge game for St Johnston because of people letting off flares, um, climbing on the wall adjacent to the section of seats as well. I mean, just yeah. moronic behaviour. Yeah, again, you know, it's, uh, the good supporters are the ones that are suffering, you know, for these these individuals, you know, and uh, UEFA must have some pot of gold yeah. with the, the amount of money <laughs> that they, <laughs> they, they find everybody throughout Europe. But, but it's easier now, I think, Tam, I don't know if you agree with this, it's easier now to get into a, a stadium with pyrotechnics because a lot of the season ticket holders and some of the, the big stadia yeah, can, can go in with the electronic key. And there's key. not a lot of stewards necessarily. No, 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 stewards are chest Stewards or police or any sort of security cost money at the clubs. If they think they don't need it, then in they go. And the best example I've ever heard of that. And I was there that night and not guilty, my lord, but a few number of years ago when the electronic uh, ticketing was first kicking in. Um, we were doing it a, a midweek game doing it at St Mirren at the new stadium. And uh, word quickly spread um, amongst the Motherwell fans that had turned up. It was that kind of nightmare scenario almost where you couldn't just turn up and pay in. 
uh, you had to turn up, go and buy a ticket, hand your money or get the ticket, and then walk back round to the turnstile with the ticket to register it in the barcode before the turnstiles clicked you through, right? But word quickly spread, it was like wildfire, right? That if you went and actually bought a kid's ticket, <laughs> there was nobody at the turnstile to check it. Yeah. So you could go and buy a boy's ticket and then just walk up, beep, and the turnstiles clicked and through you went. So I don't know how much money <laughs> St Murren lost that particular night, because mum will always take a good uh, a good support down there that's not too far away, of course, to Paisley. Yeah. Um, but again, that was one of the issues with electronic ticketing. But you're right. And But you know what, Peter? I do in my heart of hearts, because I always think of the well boys, the young posse at Murrell. Yes, there's been the odd wee misdemeanour from time to time before MDs making any mere comments at you as if cowans forgetting <laughs> about uh, past crimes with Murrell fans. But those boys, largely, and here we are back, we've got fans back in, they, they have been the atmosphere yeah. at Fir Park for a long number of years now. And it's exactly the same. Cosgrove tells me about them all the time. Uh, the young posse in there at St Johnson, I'll tell you, for them to miss out, on a game that their manager Callum Davidson has described as the biggest game in club history, that's a sore one. Yeah. That's a sore one. The message might get through then about flares and rockets and all sorts of pyrotechnics. Yeah. But I'm glad that the sort of a, that spate we were having we, we fans running onto the park sort of a stopped a wee bit. You know, they were running on and yeah. I think when I noticed at the weekend it was your game. It's, it was Livy. Uh, and Motherwell and Motherwell scored their second goal yep. and obviously the Motherwell fans were just about to do it. There, yes. there was one wee woman holding a gate, <laughs> just, <to mention, laughs> just herself, a right? security woman. She was just holding it now. <laughs> Ah, a, a good hardy <laughs> West Lothian woman. She would get the only, only wee whipper snapper strike going. Maybe the idea is that maybe somebody's cracked it at Dundee Football Club. Maybe instead of the fans getting on the pitch, just do what Paul McGowan did. Jumped into them. And jump into <laughs> the fans. All right, you're going to get a yellow card. But if you've not already been cautioned, um, it's no any big deal. He nearly never get up on the date when he was trying to get oh, there. Oh, and again, um, see, jumped onto them like the metal bat with the studs. Yeah. Uh, you imagine, it's the sort of thing that it, it would happen in Scottish football. He tries to jump up there. He skates, breaks his um, leg or something, and suddenly McPake's going off his nut at him, you know. When we were up at our broth at the weekend there, there was an element of the, the wee group, but they were all young kids. Yeah. You know, they weren't they, like 15, so they were all young kids, and they were all in the middle. But when the game started, they all went behind the thistle goal. Uh, and every time the, the goalkeeper went to take a bye kick, they started hitting the tin. Oh, oh, right, the, the phone, aye, aye. See, that'd be me, I'd be like, chuck aye. that up, man. The, the, the noise was unbelievable. Tell me this, you, you, you went up then to our broth, yeah? Yes. Aye. Has Dick Campbell lost about 14 stone? No. Right, I thought that because one of the pictures in the paper... It must have been pink. <laughs> yes, one of the pictures in the papers, I knew it had been Ian Campbell. Yeah. One of the pictures was captioned, Dick Campbell celebrates, but he was, he was like, ah, Stick. I says, what's going on here? And I thought, no, 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 that'll be pink. Um, well, you mentioned... What was the your... score? I missed it. Ah, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you mentioned there that uh, Callum Davison will be peeved. Um, about this whole thing because it's such a huge game for them. Michael O'Halloran saying even the players realise the enormity of this match against Lask. Their main focus is, is Thursday night and which is massive for the club and it's possibly the well, financially as the the biggest game in, in the club's history. So that's gone now Sunday and yeah that's our total focus now is, is Thursday night in, in, in Lask. The boys have played in, in massive games before like uh, cup finals etc and I think the only thing that was missing was, was the fans. So hopefully they can get out in the, in the numbers, the supporters in, in Thursday night and we can create a night to remember. Yeah, you um, you thought they were going to struggle, but suddenly I'm looking at this and thinking yeah, well, St Johnson could do this this no, time. No, I think the, the players will believe they can. They've went to Galatasaray, uh, they've went to the last game and now they've got a game at home. I thought they looked to be a bit leggy at the weekend there. They didn't look you know, yeah. as sharp as what they've been, but... The biggest problem is now they're in a situation where they've got to win the game. You know, and when you go to win the game, it's different if you're going away and trying to see the game out and get a draw. Yeah. And we saw what happened with Galatasaray. So I'm sure Callum will have them really organising. I really do hope they score first and it puts a bit of pressure on them Aye. and they can maybe relax a wee bit because it is going to be And, you, and quite you've got, to, you've got to feel sorry for Saints. I mean, there you go, the first year at the away goals rule. 
is uh, put in the dustbin and they get a one each away, <laughs> away at Galatasaray and a one each away with Lask, which would ordinarily put them in a great position. Maybe even psychologically have been a great help as well. But no, I think I've got a feeling they can do it. And I'm still amazed, correct me if I'm wrong, Peter, you're over this stuff day in, day out, but they still haven't lost any players, St Johnston, no. No, no. So the incredible thing is, would have gone. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Rooney, Rooney tend to be the bookies' favourite. And then you've got boys like Ali McCann and, yep. you know, all right, my old Claret and Amber Specks on again, thank these dad. But Jamie McCart was exceptional last year as well. And Xander Clark, uh, you know, another short window for him getting in the Scotland set up. Yeah. But again, it'll be interesting to see how this develops. If they get through, and it'd be great, I mean, if, if we get the four teams to win uh, this week, and then you've got you've got all of them in, in group stage football in Europe to at least Christmas, it'll be absolutely magnificent, even just as a neutral TV spectator, you know. But um, it'll be interesting to see what happens with St. Johnson players then, because they know, we know that. Uh, clubs could still swoop for them, but what a short window again yeah. if they could be playing European football to the end of the year. It'd be brilliant. Yeah, well, Callum Davison has mentioned the fact that if they get European football and group stage football, then he'll be able to keep them. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he's gone on record as saying that, so here's hoping Aberdeen. Or has... he'll be able to get even more money for them. Well, exactly. You get extended. Uh, uh, the risky sound like Steve Brown there. No, but, no, no. Uh, I'm I think happy. he'll be thinking about that. You yeah, know. I'm happy with that as well. Um, but I, I'd like to see them at least keep the team together um, and give the St Johnson fans, you know, something to celebrate this year and what has been an unbelievable year for them. A double European football, group stage football, that would be great. And for me as well, Ruffy, I'd love to see Aberdeen do the business against uh, Carabag. They've added uh, Austin Samuels on a loan deal from, from Wolves um, with an option to buy. He's only 20, but still, when you look at the strikers they've got at the club, need a wee bit um, to add to it as well. Uh, they've only got um, Jet and Christian Ramirez, um, so clearly Aberdeen. It's in. It's it's a great chance for them. Only one nothing behind in this one. I think they can turn it around. Yeah, and this is the round they usually go pear shaped, don't they? They do usually do something stupid and just fall short. So I hope it's not this time. Like Sir Johnson, they've got to score first. If that other team score first, then I think it's an uphill battle. So I think Aberdeen will score first. But I think it's going to be a long, long night. I know you change your mind daily, and we allow you that now, uh, Ruffy. Um, how many are you going for th through? I went two. You're still staying two? Unfortunately. Celtic I'd love and to Rangers? say three, yeah. I'd yeah. love to say three, but I'm two. I, I, I'm, going to go, I'm going to go three, Tam. How many are you going? Um, I think looking at Rangers away for them in recent years under Gerard in Europe was very, very impressive. So yeah. I think Rangers will get through. I think Celtic have already done enough to get through. I'm very confident that St Johnston will have learned lessons from Galatasaray and they're, they're definitely playing a weaker team. Yep. And, you know, Aberdeen will be delighted to be playing in this second leg on grass, unlike that yeah. rutted, ploughed field that they had to play on first time round, resulting in an injury, of course, he gets stretched off for um, Andy Considine. So I, I'm going to be bold. Gone are the days of me in this programme. Nothing needs. Tipping nil-nil. No, no. <laughs> <Nathan needs. laughs> right. that that's gone, that's gone. That was yeah. the old time. The new one wears <laughs> shorts. <laughs> Right, <laughs> um, I, I, I'm going to go four teams getting through oh, and I, I wish them all the very best because as you know Peter, Sitchin in last week's programme, even when, when I was doing this on a Thursday, he dropped me off um, in Glasgow many a time so I could go meet up with pals, watch the games on the telly. When it comes to Scottish teams, I'm a brilliant neutral. Yes. Don't ask me to watch English teams or European teams, but I want them all in there and I'm forecasting the four of them. We'll get through. I mean, in fact, I'll put that on in my line. Yeah. Whatever the odds are, we accumulate just the four of them to go through. That'd be brilliant. Uh, fingers crossed. Um, I share, um, obviously, the enthusiasm for Scottish. What did you think? You didn't tell us. I think three. I think Rangers, Celtic, and I think St Johnston. I'm a oh, wee bit. Aberdeen. I'm a wee bit worried about Aberdeen, but I, I, I still, you know, for all that early, call it euphoria, hysteria, whatever. Um, it's kind of a dampened down a wee bit, but I, I, I still think they've got enough quality. They should do it, um, and I'm. Keeping my fingers crossed. I still crossed think, in terms of the general mood at the club, the confidence and everything, they cocked up big style by dropping players for the Wraith Rovers tie. Yeah. You know what I mean? That could have really had them motor. Absolutely. You know, I, I just think. No, the thing to do. No, absolutely agree with you, Tam. Um, listen, also coming up over the weekend, um, as well as just trying to be positive and trying to <laughs> talk football and things that are going on, uh, there is a small matter of the uh, Old Firm game on Sunday. This is the first meeting of them. Uh, Rangers against Celtic at Ibrox. Uh, our reporter, Gabriel Antoniazzi, is going to give you details of how you can win either the Rangers strip or the Celtic strip.
This week at PLZ Soccer, we're giving away both a Rangers and a Celtic jersey ahead of Sunday's Old Firm. All you've got to do to win this Rangers top is subscribe to the YouTube channel and comment on the live show saying Rangers. To win this Celtic jersey, all you've got to do is subscribe to the PLZ Soccer YouTube channel and comment on the live show saying Celtic. Don't forget, it's the Old Firm giveaway special. You could win a Rangers or a Celtic jersey. Just subscribe to PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel and the football show, don't forget, is every day at 4 o'clock. Yeah, good luck with that. Thanks to everyone who's joined the football family and subscribed as well. Tell your friends, share it along uh, with uh, your mates uh, and let everybody come on and see us 4 o'clock live, Monday to Friday. And of course, if you miss it, you can watch it later on. And as Ruffy found out to his amazement on his television, uh, you can, with a smart telly, go to the YouTube and put in PLZ Sock and you'll get all the unique content. And you can also go down the apps on your left-hand side of your panel uh, and get to YouTube that way as well. So good luck with that, fingers crossed. A um, lot of other things that we um, want to talk about just before we go. Um, I don't know about you, Ruffy, but if you're talking about positive things, uh, Tam was mentioning we thoroughly enjoyed the Euros, and I think it's a great little um, mention for Denmark's medical team and Simon Kier, who are going to receive the UEFA President's Award this week because of their life-saving reaction to Christian Eriksson's cardiac arrest at uh, Euro 2020. It's just it's a, it's a worthy award. It's, it was a horrific night, I think, if we all... Cast our mind back to it. I think the, the most horrible. I know the Ericsson thing was horrendous, but his wife actually being on mm. trackside was was tear jerking to everybody, even yeah. the opposition. Yeah, you're right, and and it means that the the appliances, the things they need to to rescue somebody is now becoming more apparent and more available uh, because of the quickness of how they get out there. They're, they're trying to make sure that that apparatus is there for not just senior football, but junior football, amateur football, and it just shows you how worth, worthy it is to have that available. Yeah. It, it just, it was horrendous. And as my wife always says, she's the, she deals with the first aid at school at which she works, and she says, and it's an important message, if you see a defibrillator and somebody needs it, and you don't know how it works, have a go anyway. Yeah. Have a go. If you don't, you might not, just have a go, it could save somebody's life, you know. But And a, and a lighter note, I must say as well, Peter, if they're giving the award, quite rightly, uh, to the Denmark medical team, I still think punishment awaits that uh, Denmark player, Poulsen, who in that game, after everything that had happened to Christian Eriksen, after the reaction for the Finland fans, after the reaction for the Finland team, applauding the Denmark players back on, he dived to win his team a penalty. <laughs> now you know how I feel about diving. It is a scourge of football, right? Yeah. And that was the ultimate example. And I remember getting on the radio that day after that game and just saying, look, if 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 you for a FIFA, if they don't outlaw gambling, if they don't uh, gambling, if they don't outlaw, <laughs> if they, it's because I'm staring at all these uh, Celtic Rangers jerseys with all the sponsors. If they don't outlaw diving now, yeah. they never will. And Matt, what was he thinking after know. everything that would happened? Why didn't he cheat his opponents? <laughs> it was. Pfft. I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, well, listen, uh, don't, uh, I can hear Gordon Strachan's thoughts echoing in my head right now. Don't look to footballers for the moral high ground <laughs> oh, and leading by aye. example. I um, take it you never had Finland on your lane then. No, <laughs> <laughs> no. It was, still, it was still last season. I'll tell you a really positive aspect of football. I mean, you know, I, I know you don't like, it's not that you don't like it, but you don't watch it as, as much as I do the English football, um, Ruffy, but last night's game was fantastic because West Ham thumped Leicester by four goals to one and the boy Antonio I don't know about you Ruffy there are certain players that I think because of their build are just it's like a battering ram I always thought I always thought Mark Hately and Chris Sutton had that ability you know to hold players off win a free kick barge their way through they were, they were really physical and then there are players who are built like Akin Fenway, he's a big guy, but Michael uh, Michael Antonio, he's just he just looks solid muscle, but he's he can finish as well. Yeah, I mean they've just kicked on for last year, you know, and, and good on them, you know, and we know Davy hadn't the same amount of money, you know, to spend as everybody else. But when you're on a run like that, I mean that I couldn't see four one coming. I could see yeah. them maybe winning, but and if if the fans really buy into that new stadium and, and they start to fill it you know, what an atmosphere that would be to play in, in, in that, you know, it's incredible. But somebody somebody said to me when they, they when they came out of the championship and they went into the English Premiership and the first day they walked out against a Premier side, the players were all bigger. 
Yeah. Mm. They were all bigger that way and they were all bigger that way. They were giants, you know, and uh, that was the first thing they had to do. It's like when Murrow, when we played Nancy back in the day, 2007, Mark McGee got us back into Europe and, you know, there was clearly no shame in losing to the guys. I remember the leg at Fir Park and after it, they were swapping the jerseys and when the Nancy players walked off, they were all at big <laughs> cruiserweight boxers, you know what I mean? You think, wow, they, they, those are athletes, you know? And we'd all these wee guys for Bell Sill and that, you know? I think how rough he felt when he looked over and he saw Socrates oh, in the front aye. of the queue. Aye. And there's Junior there as well. Zico, they all looked apart as well. Falcao. Um, but uh, uh, Davy Moyes, just on that point, um, mentioned last night about Mikel Antonio. He's now the record Premiership goal scorer for West Ham. I just didn't think they had made the right choices in the first half of the ball quite a few times. So, uh, but I thought the second half he was different class. His link up play, his positioning, you no, know, the way he set up Saeed for his goal was was terrific. So uh, he offered an awful lot for us in the second half. He was very good. Yeah, I, I like Davy's attitude. By the way, half time you're rubbish, and then <laughs> get your act together. And then there's nothing better than a, a striker coming out and going, "I'll prove the manager wrong." Yeah, but if he does it, then you're you're quite happy with whatever motivation you've used at half time to get him to where he is. But yeah. no, good luck to Davy, and I hope he stays up there. Yeah, I know we're all biased because we're Scottish, but ever since what happened to him, thanks, thankless task and in there at Man United, yeah. you know, and getting absolutely flamed. You just want it to do well after that, you know? Yeah, I'm derailed. Uh, I know Davey well, um, but um, I'm sure he won't say it, but I will. Derailed by an inept chief executive. Mm. Um, it happens to the best of them. Um, just before we go, here's a great thing for you, as well as the competition we've got. Don't forget, all you have to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel and then write Celtic or Rangers to whatever top you want. Um, and we'll announce the winner on Friday for our competition. Um, so in the feed, as well as subscribing, just put Celtic or Rangers, depending on the top you want, and then we'll pick one lucky winner on Friday for the Rangers top, one lucky winner for the Celtic top. Um, these two here, just behind Ruffy's uh, head. Um, incidentally, here's another great thing that you might want to give us your thoughts on. Manchester City have announced that they're going to have a statue of Vincent Kompany, David Silva and uh, Kun Aguero um, outside the Etihad Stadium, which I think is fantastic. Because I know the history of Man City, Ruffy, I think they should have Bell Lee, lot, yeah. Bell Lee and Summerby out there as well, to be perfectly honest with you. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of the older supporters will be throwing up names, uh, even the manager, uh, Alisson, what is his name? Malcolm uh, Allison. Malcolm Allison. I mean, the, the success that they had back then and the players that you've mentioned as well they're, they're, they're just the Malcolm Allison statue would be great with a sheepskin uh, coat uh, and, yeah, the, and the grey flares yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> that would be superb but uh, as well as you know Belly and Summer which I think are an absolute shoe in for Manchester City I hope they don't forget about it um, there are various statues around clubs at the moment John Greggs is a, a very emotional statue if you read the plaque below it as well um, regarding the Ibrox disaster but it's a great photograph of Greggy um, uh, in the bronze statue Billy McNeil equally so Jimmy Johnson I actually think from Celtic's perspective they should have 1 to 11 their Lisbon lines up the Celtic walkway um, but he, we put it out today on our Twitter feed some of the places that should have a statue and who they think should be there um, again Bell Lee and Summerby came from Man City fans Davy Cooper uh, at Rangers Ali McCoist at Rangers um, great goal scorer Henrik Larson Lisbon Lions mentioned the, he's a good one Ruffy I mean Sir Alex Ferguson is going to be honoured outside um, Pataudry which is magnificent um, the famous five at Hibs that's a good shout isn't it yeah. what a great side they were they were, they certainly were, and again, the older supporters will remember them uh, vividly. And that new uh, uh, place just outside the main door at Easter Road would be an ideal situation to put something like that because a lot of the supporters sort of a mingle there before the yeah. game, and it's always good to associate uh, people like that at the yeah. club. And uh, the Jim McLean statue well, has been yeah, unveiled I was going to say to uh, you next Tom, month. The, I'm the, looking forward to seeing that. The you? fans group had gathered that, and I think it's meant to be the image of him. I think it is when he was uh, hoisted shoulder high by the players at Dens Park, League trophy. and it's maybe when he was giving it one of those to the fans. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure that may be the image that's been recreated, but whatever it is, it's certainly it, well it's deserved him, anyway. It's him with the Premier League trophy. Oh, is it? Is yeah. it? Right, brilliant, yeah. brilliant. Which is great, isn't it? I right. mean, can you think of others that are absolute stonewallers that should be honoured? Yeah. 
Alf. You're yeah, it's difficult for St Johnston, though, isn't it? If, uh, well, <laughs> well yeah. aye, it's a team effort, you mean, aye? Well, if you were going to put a statue outside for St Johnston right now, and you think to yourself, wait a minute, the Scottish Cup winning side with uh, Dave Mackay would have been looking, thinking, ah, exactly. OK, I'm in with a exactly. shout. And then, and then this double winning double side team. with Callum Davis. I mean, Tom, you're right, to win the Scottish Cup oh, I know. with I St Johnston. Know. I, I think a similar dilemma at Motherwell. I mean, I think, you know, we're seeing Jim McLean. Does Tommy McLean deserve it for what he achieved at the club? I, I wonder will I ever see my club win a trophy again? It has now been 30 years. Um, then you you've got... You will. You think I will? Absolutely. Aye. If absolutely. you bring back the tenant sixes, maybe we will, we will taste <laughs> it that for a while. But no, and then you've got like, the late, great Joe Work. Uh, the Winnie Bamado fan would disagree with that. We still don't actually have a stander in named in honour of Joe. That's very much a one-club man. We obviously have got the tributes to Phil O'Donnell, very artistic. Uh, piece in the, the gable end the, the Phil O'Donnell stand uh, we've got the Sailor Hunter stand you know we've got unofficially the South stand unofficially is the Tommy Boyd stand in terms of the money <laughs> <laughs> but yeah there's a few contenders or a wee hey one up just if you go a wee personal favourite guy Dougie Arnott Dougie Arnott and don't even bother with the sculptor bring out his wee Sabutio figure <laughs> That's, that, it's almost perfect size yeah. but, uh, there's, oh, there's great contenders at every club absolutely and I think fans you know what I think we all love to see them uh, being paid tribute to in that manner. You know, yeah. it's great. Uh, did we Robo get a shout for Hearts or am I just being biased? No, no, I think oh, Robo would. Robo would be. You'd have to put Sandy in. You can't have one without the other because the two of them are a team. What, Sandy, Sandy Clark? Clark and the two of them are I, up front. I, I know he's not, never scored not, not the same so amount of goals. I'm not disrespecting Sandy because I thought he was a, it was a good double act, but, but I think Robo without Sandy I as know, well was but you know what? out in his own. I think you had the nail on the head there because that's, it's almost the Morecambe and Wise scenario. I mean, Eric Morecambe himself admitted there'd be nothing without Ernie Wise, but it was Eric that got all the tributes. And I think that's a fair point you just made there. I bet we Robbo would be the first to pay tribute to Sandy Clark, you know, who maybe got a wee bit overlooked. Oh, he paid tribute to him, but he'd say, look, just, just keep... <laughs> Just keep, just keep, just keep, just keep statue for me though. Just keep there with the ball. Because obviously I said we keep going on about our 71 year this year. We're actually oh. at the side. I don't know if you've seen the wall of the side of the, the stadium. That no, I up. support a top flight club. What does the view not go was? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a wall. No need to go to far. And there's a... Well, we used to play. He might have, he might have been there a couple of years ago. Anyway, we've got a painter who is going to paint David McParland, who is the manager of 71, oh, yeah, on yeah. The, the wall and a, a montage all the way up for the supporters to look at the, the road to it and everything. And the unfortunate thing is he's a he's one of the graffiti painters and he only can do it at night when there's nobody looking. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we don't know how long he's going to take. I actually I actually think it's a good shout for your captain, Alec Ray. Yes, um, I You know. I you think know. Davey would get it before being yeah. the manager, yeah, before the captain. Yeah, well, that's yeah, a good that's point. I mean, Davey, definitely, you know, mm. um, it's one or the other or, or both. It would You're be happy great. with a lunch named after you? That you settle for that? Well, there might be something else coming up, but oh, I can't really. Oh, oh is that right? Yeah. If it lands in the papers before here, I'm going to <laughs> batter you. Um, anyway, apart from anything else, yeah, there's lots of people uh, suggesting um, players, managers. Thank you very much for all your positive contributions. Um, incidentally, on the 23rd of October, um, there will be a Partick Thistle special. That's 50 years on that date uh, since Partick Thistle defeated Celtic by four goals to one. What a scoreline it was. What a day it was for Ruffy. He was only 19 years of age. Um, just uh, with everything ahead of him. World Cups, failures, misery, uh, and of course, <laughs> and of course, ending up here with me and you, Tom. <laughs> but, uh, but nevertheless, uh, great happy memories. And Ruffy with Alec Ray, the Party Thistle captain um, of 1971. We were shooting the breeze, going back through the memories. Some great funny stories. And that'll be on the 23rd of October as a special Partick Thistle football show. Hopefully you'll enjoy that. Don't forget the competition for the uh, Old Firm jerseys. All you have to do is tell us whether you want a Celtic or a Rangers jersey uh, on the feed below. And also uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you very much for all the thoroughly decent comments and the humour um, that has uh, come in through our feed. And we really do value you messaging us. If you really want to uh, message us with a video, you can. Download the PLZ Soccer app. You hit submissions 
and uh, you can record yourself and if we use it we'll send you something special there are uh, more than a few happy people with uh, some special goodies on the way to them great to see Tam in the shorts it's warm at the moment but let me tell you those shorts will be getting packed away shortly let me tell you as the weather changes roughly as we start to hit September and October but it's good to see him out in the shorts isn't it? Oh enjoy it for the next and week it is it's bacon. going to be glorious I'm going to leave probably glorious. half my leg skin on this leather couch <laughs> trust me I'm sat in here I've been stuck for an hour you need to help me up brilliant thanks to Tom thanks to Ruffy thanks to you for staying with us from myself Peter Martin thanks for watching